Okay, we're on. Woohoo! Tell me what you're doing. <laughs> oh, not not chaos again. Not a, another Thursday of chaos. Uh, good evening. Welcome along, SCFC Fan TV. We're back again on a Thursday uh, with the gang to uh, to talk football. Don't forget, of course, uh, we are live, which means you can join us uh, via the live chat if you want to uh, have any input. We will uh, we will give you a shout out. And if you've got anything you'd like to ask us, uh, ask away. Uh, with myself uh, tonight, uh, we have uh, Dino in his fancy bedroom with his fancy lights. Show us your fancy lights. Look at them lights. <laughs> strip uh, we... for me, babe. Strip for you. <laughs> uh, we got uh, we got Michael Bowers with us. Hello, Michael Bowers. Good, good man. We got uh, we got Terry. Sorry, the I'm mad just disturbed mistake. by what Terry said. But, there was uh, a male yeah, stripper in Dino's. <laughs> uh, he know the meal stripper. Our uh, man Dan Saf. Uh, we got uh, Jacob Kirk. Right, Jacob, give us a wave. Good, Woo-hoo! good man. That'll do. And our special guest uh, on the show tonight, uh, Towie's finest. Uh, from, of course, his uh, YouTube channel, uh, My Son at 11, and uh, Fans React as well. Can I have a big round of applause, please, for Matthew Lead? Woohoo! Dan <laughs> Oh, Thank you, the Philly. Southerners. Southerners are taking over. Uh, really? quick shout that- yes, Matt. You told me his name was James. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> Who told you that? Uh, right then. Uh, shout out on the chat quickly. Uh, David Walker in there. Donny Macam. Hello, Donny Macam. Uh, Tyler Metcalf. Acacia Cameron. Jude. Uh, SCFC. Dave. Mark Rodham. All you lot in the chat. We will give you a mention. And we'll keep going to that. Uh, We are going to start, as we normally do, uh, with the game uh, which uh, was on Tuesday night, which finished Sunderland 1, Swindon Town 0. It was a... Oh, it was a hard watch, uh, but it was a win. Three points in the bag. Uh, Dino, do you want to start us off? Uh, what did you think? It was it was a terrible game, wasn't it? Let's be fair. I mean, it wasn't like a... Uh, I mean, Swindon came with a game plan. They sat back, gay, frustrated with. They do have the worst defensive record in the league. I think they've conceded the most goals. And they just sat back and we just couldn't break them down. It was a, the same old story. <laughs> um them had a few chances by a, via free kick. Swaley Birch tipped one around the post. Um, it was just a drab game. Where passing was awful. Uh, come half time, was screaming out for a change. Didn't I? Don't know how we we're going to change it, but we were screaming out for something to change. Um, he didn't make any changes until the 60th minute. He brought, I think, he brought four subs on. If I'm correct, I can't really remember. But Chris McGuire came on. Or Brian came on. Yeah. Uh, Diamond as well, I think, is uh, if I re- remember correctly, it was that much of a drab game? I can't even remember who came on and off. But uh, we finally did grab the goal. It was a great ball by Chris Maguire. It's only the second good thing he's done since he's came back into the team. I mean, everyone's going on that he's uh, he's back. He's still got a lot more to prove to me this season. Um, great ball in Charlie White with a header. Charlie White had a quiet game, but he got the goal. I did say maybe take him off. He looks a bit tired, but prove me wrong again. He scored the goal. It's a scrappy 1-0 win. I was disappointed we didn't score more, but I'll take the three points all the same. Uh, good man. Uh, quickly, we've got to go to the uh, to the chat. Uh, Chris Scott says, is Jack OK, Philly? Uh, he's been quiet recently. Well, uh, what we'll say is uh, Jack is still well and truly with us. Uh, of course, he's doing lots of things. He does uh, uh, the live commentary. If you've not checked that out on a match day, he's doing that. And he does our previews as well. Uh, so he's... Uh, He's just having a little uh, little break on a Thursday. He's having a little rest because he's tired, because he's he's got homework to do from school and all <laughs> all that sort of stuff. So, uh, but no, Jack's all uh, Jack's all good and well. Uh, Tony Lee on the chat says, uh, "Where's Dodsy? Is he grounded?" Uh, yes, he didn't come home on time uh, the other night. We told him he had to be in by ten o'clock, and it was half past when he came home. So he is grounded. Uh, Michael Bowers one nil to Sunderland against Swindon Town. Um, happy with the result and what did you think of the game? Well, it's it's a, it's obviously an important game in the sense that we obviously came back from two down against Crew in what was a dreadful performance in that game to score two starts to get a point there. Uh, these ne- Like I said, I did say that the games coming up would determine whether that Crew game in the context of the whole season, is a good result. Obviously, the manner of the game in isolation it is, but in the context of the, the games coming up, then yeah, um, 
Swindon, important to get the win there. They went and won a dip switch a few months ago. They drew against Lincoln, uh, I think it was a week or two ago. Um, but these are the games you've got to win if you're wanting to... If these. Are, I know I say, I feel like I say this all the time, but these are the games you've got to win if you want to get in the top two. I still don't know whether we'll do it or not, but we're giving ourselves a chance but to do it by winning these games. The same applies to Saturday. It's got to be a three-point on Saturday against Rochdale. As for the game, it, was, it looked pretty drab from what I saw of it. It was just... just well, Swindon came up here with a game plan, couldn't break them down. Swindon did start, did seem to start to have a go at us once we went in front. Um, I agree with Dino about Maguire. I think that it was a very good cross, very good cross, and obviously White matched it with a good header. But um, with like I said, I would like to see more from Maguire if he's going to start games. I want to see the Maguire when like the Maguire who pops up with massive moments, and I mean also contributes a lot to the team. So it's a big win. Just move on, three points. Move on to Saturday. Hopefully, get a win there, and hopefully, it'll set us up nicely going into the next week. Uh, right, thanks, Michael. Uh, back to the chat quickly. Uh, Nigel Dunn says uh, it was a drab game, but Terry still almost had a heart attack. Uh, that's a fan for you. Uh, he's referring to, uh, of course, uh, watching Terry's channel, uh, who does the live commentary as well. Uh, if you want to check that out, that is uh, the mad mistake uh, down there. Um, Conrad, our editor on the chat, says, uh, yes, Ant. He's referring to uh, Tony Lee. Uh, obviously, he says, yeah, he's grounded. Mark Rodham says, no pocket money for Jack this week. Mick Griffiths says, uh, past his bedtime. And uh, also, uh, Mark Rodham says, uh, Michael Broad Michael's broadband is dial-up 56k 50, modem, and it could well be. Uh, so we got our guest on. we got Matthew on. Uh, obviously, you watched the game. Sunderland won, Swindon Town nil. Uh, your thoughts on it, please? Yeah, well, I mean, as Dina said, it was a, an awful game. Um, it took took us a, took us a long time to try and get the goal. I thought there might be a point in the game where I thought, you know, we could draw this nil nil here. And uh, yeah, but it was great. <clears throat> you got to give Maguire credit. He's he's come back into the team. Fantastic delivery into the box. And you know, you got to rely on your strikers, um, you know, to score. And he he's done just that because you know, as a striker, you might get one or two chances a game and you've got to make sure when you get that chance uh, you score and uh, that's what he's done and what he's been doing this season so yeah it's been um yeah, it, it was a good win um and you know it, it's, it's happened with the sort of the work the worst of teams in this league that we found them harder to beat than the the better teams um and yeah it, it wasn't an easy game and i don't know if you saw that that swindon players um comment uh after the game where he said all of a sudden that you can see how much it meant to them by the way they all celebrated um you know almost putting us down you know like we've beat little swindon town uh like a lot of clubs have done which is it's just ridiculous really making comments like that but yeah it's uh it's it's a good win really um you know i was uh i was thinking back to last season where we um you know, we were on that good run and then we drew against um fleetwood um and then we went on a sort of bad run of form after after that and ended up you know missing out on uh, promotion during the, the points per game and i thought it could be a similar similar scenario with you know we being on a good run drawing at crew um and then that's might that might be where the good run stops but look we won the game which is good and um yeah facing rochdale on on a saturday which is a game i think we should we should definitely win um yeah definitely i think uh, you're right with the obviously the, the Swindon player made in the comment. Um, to to be fair, you know I think Swindon did their homework on us and uh, and just like a lot of like a lot of teams, you know they they make themselves hard to beat. But if you can win <clears throat> ugly, that that's what it's all about. Uh, quickly on the chat, I'm assuming this is Paul. Uh, fans react says have a good show, Matthew mate, with a thumbs up. There, so yeah. uh, thanks, good, good, thanks good luck to him today as well because I think his um his uh, girlfriend's gone into labour oh. as well. So good luck, uh, good yeah, luck. Um, yeah, well. good luck, Paul. All Congratulations. Right. Luck with that. Yeah, good Hopefully, luck. It, um, hoping the baby's slivered okay. Yeah, nice one. Um, uh, Mick Griffiths on the chat on the chat says, and I think we'll finish uh, in the top two. Um, so we'll go to uh, well, Terry. What did you think then? One nil against Swindon Town. Oh, where do we start? Oh, oh you know, yeah, the new Doominator. Do no. Do you know what, you know what it is, mate? Oh, I have to see it. Boo. I have to see it. Swindon were the worst team I've seen this season. They were absolutely mm. terrible. They couldn't pass the ball. Every given opportunity, as soon as they got out of their half, they give the ball back to Sunderland. 
and we couldn't do diddly squat with it because our midfielders are just too slow getting into their box. By the time we get organised and pass the ball around 50 times and get into the box, the cross comes into the box, nobody wants to break a neck, nobody wants to break their leg to get into the penalty box. Nobody at all. you got Winchester who couldn't lock his mother's door, or my mother's door. you got bloody <laughs> flipping Scowl who kind of pass the ball, kind of run with the ball. He doesn't even want to run anywhere full stop. it take forever to get in the penalty box. And that was Lee Johnson's issue with half time. He said there was nobody breaking the neck to get into the penalty box to help out Charlie White. Through Charlie White trying to do it all by himself. And that's the issue. You know, we didn't know what to do. We're giving the ball every single opportunity. Swindon couldn't pass. So Swindon, honest to God, yeah. They can complain about us celebrating, but they are the worst team I have seen in League One this season. And I'm hoping Rochdale's going to be even worse on Saturday because they need to be if we want to win football because I don't think we're that good at the moment. But on the bright side of things, on the bright side of things, there's two, there's two ways of looking at it, right? We were terrible. Swindon were worse. But we have 11 players injured. We have a makeshift defence, Max Power, doing an absolute fantastic job in defence. We have two middle, two midfielders in defence. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You couldn't make it up. So the team itself, with a makeshift side, with 11 players out, for me, are doing absolutely fantastic to be where they are at this moment in time in fourth place. Lee Johnson's got the team. You know, he, he has to work and do the game. He can see there's, there's things not going right. And after he's... After the match, he tells us the way it was. He said at half time he was not happy. He had a good word with the lads to get into the penalty box, help out the team more. And the second half, it got better. And like I said, Chris Maguire. Maguire's he's always been good off the bench for me. He's always come good off the bench. He, he goes through those phases where he gets in the first team, he gets complacent, and he loses his way. But for me, Chris, the best Chris Maguire is coming off the bench. Probably the first couple of games he starts for Sunderland for a full match. That's when you say the best Chris Maguire. But yeah, well done, Chris McGuire and Charlie White. What can you kind of fault Charlie White at all? Absolutely fantastic this season. There's no doubt in my mind he will be the top goal scorer by the end of the season. Yeah, get your money on it. Not like putting it on Will Grigg. You didn't want to do that. A fool would do that. Uh, yeah. Right on the chat, we've got to give a shout out to uh, Steve Coniston. If that really is his name, he says... Hi to Tony and Monkey. That must be uh, me and Tony Lee uh, down there. Uh, also says uh, Colin Major down here uh, says, whenever I watch Terry on a Saturday, I have to have my blood pressure red. Uh, and also, uh, where's he at? Uh, Chris Scott down here says, uh, our midfield is slower than Michael's internet. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the midfield is, is quite that slow. Um, right, let's go. Let's go down south. All right, to uh, to speak to Jacob. Then who uh, who was watching the game? Sullen one, Swindon Town nil. Uh, Jacob, what did you think, Matt? Uh, performance wasn't at its greatest, but. I think we're at a stage in the season now where the three points matters most and we managed to get over the line on Tuesday night. It was nervy at times. I mean, take the free kick they had in the last kick of the game. My heart, my heart was in my mouth when they took that. I think it was Twine, their midfield player. He had a very dangerous set-piece capability for most of the game, to be honest. And that one crashing off the bar, you just think, oh, no, they're going to come away with a point here. But we held out for all three. Like Dino said, in the first 45 minutes, the passing was shocking. You know, we weren't moving the ball quick enough. Uh, Scowen wasn't linking up well with the midfield enough. Carl Winchester is not quite the finished article yet, but I think we're only going to see the best of him if he plays a consistent run of games. We missed Ledbetter a lot on Tuesday, I think. His possession style of play that he likes to do when he's in the team and keeping the ball and looking forward with the ball. We missed that a lot on Tuesday. But once again, Chris Maguire, I think now he's really starting to prove not only that he deserves a place back in the team, but also he deserves a new contract, to be honest. I mean, what an absolutely fantastic cross that was for Charlie White's header. It's absolutely brilliant. And he's got that in his locker uh, to do it. But like Dino said, yeah, but, uh, consistently. Nah. Yeah, but, but Jacob, I mean... Um, with Chris Maguire, I mean, he's 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 not been good all season, has he? So he scored a cracking goal and he's put a good cross in. You know, mm. you, do, does it warrant to start in the team? I think so. I mean, to take not only this performance on Tuesday, look at the fantastic goal that he scored against Crew. 
he's just showing glimpses now that he, he's proving that not only he wants to make Lee Johnson proud because Lee Johnson wasn't picking him when he first got appointed, but also that he wants to stay beyond this season as well. I think because he knows he's one of the players that his contract's up at the end of the season. He wants to make a real statement now, and I think he's got a lot to prove <clears> now at the end of the season. But like I said, Philly, three points is three points. Uh, forget the performance, but I still think we're going to have to play a lot better if we're going to have top two as our main goal this season and if we're going to achieve that. And also, I want to say um, in the chat, there was a shout-out recommendation um, to Jack Norton. All right, Norton, son, how are you doing? Um, I think it was from Jim Dixon. So, cheers, Norton, mate. Hope you uh, keep going. Uh, Michael, you, you want Linda? Michael will reply in one. <laughs> yeah, my, my point was about McGuire. My point was about McGuire. Um, yeah. When... When we're talking about a new contract, I know that Maguire, you could argue, is playing for it now, but really, he should have been doing this all season. He should. Where's this been for the previous six months? Because um, we know he's capable of better than what he's been producing. For me, I would hold off giving Maguire a new contract at least until at least for another month and a bit, because you want to try and keep him on his toes and think, well, actually, if I don't put my ideas up here, I'm not going to be offered a new deal and let's say hypothetically Sunderland go up to the championship there's no way I would think Maguire would get offered a new deal so um, I get what Jacob's saying but for me I still want to see a bit more from him I want if he keeps coming on the next couple of games and has the impact that he has then I think he deserves to start but he should be doing this consistently um, yeah that's that's a fair point that Michael uh, how many times have we seen uh, players sign new contracts and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. uh, so they, they right. give up uh, I'll come to you I'll come to you in a sec Dino uh, just very quickly uh, on the chat uh, Mark Rodham says Terry and Dino uh, could be the new Legion of Doom apparently <laughs> uh, uh, Conrad oh, our hey, that was some disco lights well we're here we are Conrad our editor uh, says uh, Dino is Hulk Hogan coming in for a disco uh, so that's uh, <laughs> that could be. Uh, uh, Lauren Kenny, hi Lauren, how you doing? Uh, has Dino made his bed? Dino, have you made your bed? What? Have you made your I bed? Unmade. Oh. Uh. oh, it's just it's just a tip. We do apologise. Uh, right, Dino, you was uh, you was wanting there, mate. Yeah, on the on the home acquire thing. I mean, uh, like. I know he's very romanticised by fans for what he's done in the first two seasons with his uh, great goals and his uh, good performances in the past two years. But this season, like you say, I have, we haven't seen enough of him. I mean, he wasn't even getting in the team at one stage, so that just shows where his mind was at and where he was physically. I mean, um, he's only just getting back onto the pitch and he has come up with a cracking goal and a, an assist. But like a lot of players can do that coming off the bench. I mean, there has been players who've done that off the bench. I mean, do you just give Maguire an impact sub role? Because when he when he starts, he just tend to go missing. Like in the first two seasons, he'd have that play, that form where he would go missing, and then you then all of a sudden he'd have three four games where he would be scoring goals and assisting, and then he'd go quiet again. I mean, let's not forget Chris Maguire is what thirty one, thirty two. He's on. The, he's going to be on the decline now. He's not going to be getting any better. He's going to be getting slower. Oh, oh whoa, whoa! He's a pensioner then, isn't he? He's, well, he's getting there. He's getting there. I mean, people like you say, people are giving a uh, like, like the lead, like even me. I was giving lead, but I was just sixty, and he's too old. But he's been our best player this season. But last season, obviously, he was going through loads with his family and stuff like that. I mean, is Chris Maguire going through the phase where now he's starting to feel his age? He's starting to get slower. He's starting to like just lose his little class of touch about him. I mean, I don't want to give a thirty-two-year-old another contract if he's not if he's gonna. Like not be part of the main squad, right? Because you can always uh, replace players. You can replace someone like Chris Maguire. You really can. Right. right. I'm going to sec Terry. We'll bring in just now. Uh, John Charles on the chat says, uh, "Leave Dino alone. Uh, he sees it as it is. He's usually right. Well, he, not always. That's you, you told. Not always. He thinks he thinks Amazon are better than Hermes, and we know <laughs> that is wrong. So he's not always right. Uh, mad mistake. You want in, mate? I two things. Dino's only got disco lights on because he, so nobody can comment about his bed. <laughs> Disguise is the fact it doesn't make his bed. He'd rather put up disco lights. <laughs> it takes half an hour to put up disco lights instead of doing his bed for five minutes. Because he's a he's a tramp. 
He's a tramp. That's what he Second is. Second thing is, if we got promoted to the championship, there's no way I would give um, Chris McGuire a contract. If we stayed in League One, I'd give him a year contract. Right, um, I right, fair dues because we're, we're gonna we're gonna Agreed. come on to uh, we're gonna come on to that uh, in a sec anyway. Uh, what I want to do before we go any further, um, our cut off uh, date for uh, we are doing our Wembley special, and uh, we are we've asked you to send in uh, send in photographs. Uh, we do oh, excuse uh, Terry for singing. Let me just uh, mute his mic. Terry, be quiet. <laughs> um, we're asking you to send photos <laughs> in uh, wearing, wearing Sunderland attire. Um, or, and better still, uh, videos. If you've got any uh, any videos and you would like to just uh, send them to us, just a quick, especially if you're from overseas. Uh, we was expecting some stuff from the Argentina branch in Turkey. Uh, stuff like that, uh, but we get a lot from Canada, USA, and all we'd like you to do is do a quick video and just sort of say, hi, I'm such and such, uh, we're in, I don't know, we're in Toronto, I want to say good luck to the lads today at Wembley, and we'll include your clip uh, in our Wembley special, but the deadline for that is going to be uh, on uh, da, da, Sunday, so we need them in by Sunday, our email address is along the bottom, uh, you can send it to our email or you can uh, send it via any of our uh, our media sites, the uh, Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, Michael, you was trying to get in there, mate. Yeah, I was in saying three, on the um, picture two, that you've one. just shown where we're advertising people, where people um, wanting to get clips in. Uh, that was a great picture of Jacob. I was always going to say that. Oh, that one there. For a bit afterwards. There you go. There it is. Yeah, what a picture of Jacob that is. I'm just pointing it out. That's it. That's him. That's him going home, going home from work at a station. But at least, at least it looks. At least it looks. Does Jacob work? Well, yeah, that's what I thought. Got in half an hour before the show. I think oh, he's nice. doing. Oh, sorry. I, I thought he was doing, Joe, I think Jacob's just loving the fact he's not the youngest person on the channel anymore. Yeah, that's uh, that's Matthew. He's just finished his own work to join us. <laughs> get <laughs> in. <laughs> uh, so don't forget, we got our uh, our social media sites. Uh, you can uh, send it to. That's across the top of the screen there, and uh, also <clears throat> uh, via our email address. So please, uh, you got till Sunday. Uh, we especially need some more video clips. So if you want to do as a video clip, just wishing the lads a uh, good luck at Wembley, uh, please do that. Get it to us by Sunday, and we will feature it in our Wembley special. Um, right, so speaking of Wembley, uh, it's only just over a week away. Uh, another final. Uh, going to be playing Tramier. Now, uh, Dion Sanderson is uh, really starting to shine for us. Uh, in the league now, uh, being one of our best players over the uh, over the last few games, and uh, he's going to be cup tied for the final. So, what are your suggestions for that? Who get who in? Would, who would we? <laughs> three uh, midfielders, three midfielders in our defence couldn't get any better, could it? Uh, so, um, so what what are we going to do there? Uh, what would you, what we'll start with? Start with our, our man from Towie. Uh, the Essex man, <laughs> Matthew. Uh, what do you think? Who, yeah. who would be uh, who would be a suitable uh, replacement for Dion Sanderson in the final? Oh, I, I don't know because it's not only um, Dion Sanderson cup tied; it's also Jake Vokins is cup tied as well. Carl Winchester's cup tied, um, and we're having a bit of a nightmare, really. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think Flanagan's coming back from injury. It's just going to be him and him and Onai, and really, I, or. I don't think Wright's going to be back. So maybe we might play a, a four at the back and just have, um, you know, maybe 09 and Flanagan at centre backs. And if, um, God, if uh, if Flanagan's not, not back, then maybe McLaughlin and, and 09 at uh, centre backs and then power at right back. Um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a bit of a nightmare, really, to try and um, to try and sort a team out. And thinking back now, to be honest, I, I don't know why we let Morgan Feeney go. Um, because although maybe, you know, Morgan Feeney, you know, played, um, well, I think it was only maybe one or one or two games for us at the start of the season. And he looked all right, to be fair, scoring a goal in this competition. Um, and I don't, I, at the time I, when we're getting rid of him, I was like, I don't understand why we're doing this because two or three injuries and he's straight in. We've had two or three injuries, maybe even four injuries now. 
And this is probably where we'd really need a centre back. I also don't really know why we haven't tried to sign a, a free agent as well. Like last season we did, we signed Tommy Smith as backup when Bailey Wright got injured. We never needed him. We never needed to call upon him, but at least we had him there as backup. So I never, I don't really know why we haven't. So yeah, Nick Johnson has got a headache. To be honest, I, I don't know what he's gonna, I don't know what he's gonna do. Um, but he's had plenty of challenges at Sunderland so far, and uh, he's he's got another one. But the way I see it, Philly, honestly, the defence four at the back, and it's uh, probably McLaughlin and um, O'Neill, and then power at right back. That, that that's the only that's the only um, mm. way I, I can I can see it. Well, I mean, it's a fair point because uh, one sec, Terry. Um, it's a fair point, and you know, Lee Johnson hasn't had it easy. I mean, the, the the amount of injuries he's had and stuff like that. But fair play to him; he's he, he's he's handled it uh, pretty well. Come out of it well. Uh, Terry, you want in there? Well, um, McLaughlin will not be back after his injection. What his vaccine? His COVID vaccine? No, he's a groin injection. Was it his groin injection he had? I think. Well, I'll have a one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, would, I would definitely start Oliver Younger, to be fair. I thought he, when he played against Fleetwood in the um, the Papa John's Trophy, one of the rounds, he played really well. I thought he was one of the best players on the pitch at the time. So why not just, just let your youngsters get there? I mean, if you've got no other defenders, you may as well play Oliver Younger, you may as well play Lugo Nine and play Max Power, three centre-backs. Um, right, well, just uh, very quickly, uh, Jacob, as you can see, has uh, stormed off camera. Uh, that is because uh, Fulham are playing Tottenham and uh, Tottenham are winning, of course. Uh, they're um, uh, Jigabits, Tottenham uh, being an <laughs> Arsenal fan. We can say this why he's not, why he's not on camera. Uh, David Walker said Fulham have equalised. It was uh, Madger uh, scored for Fulham uh, while we're on area. But apparently the goal, the goal has been disallowed. So it is uh, still 1-0 to Tottenham, which is why, why Jacob has uh, stormed off camera as, uh, as, uh, as what we said. And he's back. And back. Uh, we were just saying, uh, what a nice lad you were, uh, uh, Jacob. And now uh, we love... Uh, uh, we love the... Uh, you wash your hands? Barnet, uh, yeah. No, the Barnet um, area. Um, she all right. Uh, just quickly before we pass this question uh, around again, uh, we've got 150 watching the uh, live stream at the moment. Uh, 32 likes, as we like to do on a Sunday and a Thursday. We like to at least hit 100 likes. So uh, if you just hit the thumbs up, it'll take a second to do so. Uh, all you people on there, and let's get that number. Up. We've only got 32 at the moment, and I'm sure we can get that up to 100. If you would do that, that would help us out, and uh, we would love you forever. And we would send Michael Bowers round to your house to give you a kiss on the bottom. Uh, right, so Dion Sanderson. Um, Dino, he's going to be cut yes. side for the final. Uh, who would you replace him with? Well, like Terry, I think Terry said it. Eh? Give give younger a go. I mean, we've got youngsters. We're we're playing against Tramia, who are need to. These these youngsters will want to try and prove yourself in a, a cup final. Is no, there's no better better way to introduce yourself in a cup final. I know it's only the check of trade or the Pizza John Trophy, or whatever. But it's a big occasion for someone like a youngster to be in the first on, team to try on, and win the cup. The Pizza well, John's Trophy. Pizza <laughs> John. Who's Pizza point John? Point. John Pizza Crust or something like that, now. Yeah. Stuff Crust Trophy. <laughs> stuff. Right, yeah. Stuff Crust. Yeah, you'll know but about it... about you know about Stuff Crust as well, wouldn't you, Dino? <laughs> I do, mate. I love about Stuff Crust. <laughs> right, sorry, mate. Go on, carry on. Um, yeah, I mean, give... I mean, we've got Brandon Taylor there. I'm sure he's played a couple of first-team games. Yeah, he looked a bit shaky, but he's there. You've got <laughs> Oliver Younger. Luke O'Nine can fit in there. Um... There is options. I mean, we have actually young defenders that just haven't been given the chance. This is their chance to shine. And let's be fair, they're coming up against James Vaughan. I mean, you couldn't get a worse striker to come up against. So if you can't look good against James Vaughan, you're not going to make it. So so just, you've got options there. Just go with the back three, because like you say, we don't really have a right back or a left back. So go with the back three of uh, Luke O9, Younger, and maybe Taylor. I mean... Like you say, I'm not the manager, so I'm glad I don't have to make these decisions. But we should win either way, in my opinion. Uh, right, OK. Um, Cushy Gaming says, uh, is Lee, is me and you, Matthew, uh, is Matthew Jack's twin brother? Uh, they both look underage, apparently. <laughs> and... Uh, and my wife is being uh, my wife is being very rude. Danny says, uh, "Where'd you get those groin injections?" Asking for a friend. There you go. 
Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, Jacob, um, Dion Sanderson, he, he's been a cracking player for us recently. Uh, he is going to be a miss in the final. Uh, who would you replace him with? Well, right now it's it, it's worrying signs because obviously I think we've got a bit of a defensive crisis at the moment in terms of what players we can have fit for the final, fully fit. I mean, because you look at, I think, see, Conor McLaughlin missed the game on Tuesday because apparently, according to Terry, it was a groin injection. I didn't know that until tonight. Bailey pubic Wright, hair. A what? <laughs> a pubic hair injection. <laughs> a pubic hair injection. That's what Lee said. Or that's what Lee Johnson said on the interview. It was a pubic hair injection. <laughs> we'll, we'll let the live chat decide the outcome of that one. To be well, honest, can but, we? Um, can we? Hang on. Before you go any further, um, if if you're having a pubic hair injection, then uh, Jack's going to struggle with that on our team, isn't he? Really? <laughs> <laughs> right. Can we get off this subject? Because that's this is this, just, this is so not, not the point. for Sorry. kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. You was on about oh, some injection yeah, offenders, yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Bailey, Bailey Wright's on the verge of coming back, but will he be fully fit for the final as well? I mean, I don't know. Also, the state of Tom Flanagan recovering. Up, he had a broken foot at the start of the year, then he came back again, and then um, he was at, ruled out injured straight away after that. So, Dino has mentioned Ollie Younger. I mean, he was on the bench, I think, on Tuesday. Could he potentially be called upon? within the next few games to be honest and I think that is a decision Lee Johnson will really consider he'll have to make because it all depends on how fully fit these other defenders we have in the squad are at this moment in time so right now it's just I think I'm confident for the final but I think it, the defence is just worrying me a little bit considering also our best uh, defender uh, Dion Sanderson's out injured as well and at full back with Callum McFadzine playing who's not been playing at his, his best recently with the likes with Denver Hume out and Vokins being too inexperienced which I would say is something that we'll need to change over because I think Vokins will get better if he's played consistently but yeah I it's, it's all debatable what Johnson will decide to do on a defensive point of view, not only for the game at the weekend, the Pompey one, but also the final as well. Right. Uh, OK, then. Um, Keaton, did, uh, Terry, do you keep missing your mouth with them sweets? I eventually get them in because it's not very big, that mouth, that's all. It's tiny, Shut much, I'll show you. Listen, Can I do I two? It... Two and one. Well, then. <laughs> oh, I got one. I find it hard to believe that you would miss your mouth ever. Um... Right, Keaton, uh, Keaton Nicholson on the chat says uh, I'd give uh, I'd give a couple of under twenty three players a run out. Uh, Nigel Dunn says uh, seriously, we never play our youth uh, or anyone under the age of thirty. Um, so, Michael Bowers, I'll ask you the question now, and you can reply in about five seconds' time. Um, replacement for Dion Sanderson in the final. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Um, well, it depends. Wouldn't isn't there a chance of Tom Flanagan or Bailey Wright coming back for that game? Um, I don't know how long that. Well, I don't know about Bailey Wright, but I'm sure that Tom Flanagan apparently is in training and apparently is doing like just the basic running and gym work. I would imagine so. Maybe it's just a case of popping um him at the back with Luke O Nine, for instance. Ultimately, I suppose as a even though Tramia, have, uh, like I said, have beaten Oxford and beaten Peterborough to get the final, they've done tremendously well to get the final with who they've knocked out. We've got to be expected to win the game. So, um, not it's not a core-gone conclusion. Don't get me wrong; you've got to go and earn it. But um, we'd probably be expected to be more on the front foot anyway. So, as far as I'm concerned, for the final, let's just try and, as as simple as it sounds, just just to score as many goals as we can. Uh, yeah, we could have done without all these injuries, couldn't we? Um, I don't know. You probably have to play... Well, McFadden's going to have to play anyway because I think Vaughan's is cup-tied. Um, so, you know, if Tramia don't target that left-hand side, then I don't know what's up with them. But the centre-backs, probably Tom Flanagan and, Luke on and Conor McLaughlin, maybe. Tom Flanagan and Luke nine with power at right-back. I don't know. And then the rest of the team will have to pick itself from there. That's, uh, that's the only thing I can think of that we'd end up doing. As far as getting Oliver Younger in, he'd probably be in the matchday squad. I don't know whether I would... I don't know whether I would start him in. If, I don't know whether I'd start him, but... You never know if, if, if he starts and does well, to be fair, 
like Dino said, there's no better way to introduce yourself. So, and like I've said constantly, if these players don't make it while we're at this level, at this point in our history or in our existence, they're not going to make it here. So you never know. Uh, right, Fedus. Um, Robert Foster on the chat says, I'll come to you in a sec, Terry. Uh, says, uh, Vulc uh, Vulcans is cup tied, apparently. Uh, I don't know how true that is. Uh, Bristolian yeah, Mackham. He is. Uh, hello to you, uh, Thins there. Uh, Mr. 90, who must be uh, one of uh, related to Dino somehow because Brilliant. he's saying uh, <laughs> one, uh, only one Dino Elgar, one Dino Elgar. So uh, Mr. 90 there is a big fan of yours. Uh, 60 likes we got now. We've got 159 people uh, on the stream. And uh, if you can just hit the uh, thumbs up, uh, we're trying to get that up to 100. Um, Terry, you were trying to get in there, mate. Yeah, um, I don't think we should be playing four at the back. We need to play three centre defenders. We don't want to go back to this 4-3-3 three, three or 4-2-2-2, two, 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 not with the weakness of our defence. We need three centre backs at the back. doesn't matter who they are, whether it's McLaughlin, whether it's Power, whether it's 0-9, whether it's Bailey Wright, whether it's Oliver Younger. We need to have three back there and have the two wing backs as well because I, I don't like, the, I don't like the, the four at the back. I don't want Power right back. McFad's in left back and two makeshift central defenders. We're going to let goals in simple as because our, our midfield gets overrun time and time again. So we need to have a stronger defence. Uh, right, fair deuce. Uh, just very quickly on the chat then. Uh, Cushy Gaming says, uh, Mr. 90 is Dino on his second account, uh, which would make sense. because uh... Well, that would make no sense. You would ask me if I'm on my second account. You wouldn't ask Mr. 90 if I'm on my second account, would you? Because I would just say no. <laughs> oh, God. He was just oh, trying to have a laugh. Yeah. Dino is just trying to oh. have a laugh with you. Is Hulk Hogan going to come on to uh, So you're admitting you uh, do have a second account then? <laughs> no, I don't, mate. I, I don't have a second account. Uh, I'm right. just waiting uh, for the music to come on in Dino's room. There was a male stripper in the go-go bar. There was a male stripper in the go-go bar. Strip for me, babe. <laughs> uh, Terry, Terry, there's only me and you know that song. Terry, behave yourself, man. The others, the others are looking Look confused. Uh, right, don't forget, uh, another quick uh, shout-out for uh, videos. We are trying to get um, uh, videos for our Wembley special. If you want to record us a, a message, just wishing the lads uh, good luck, especially if you're from, uh, if you're from overseas. Uh, we'd, we'd love you to uh, get in touch. I know we get a lot of people uh, on the channel from uh, America, Canada, uh, Argentina, Greece, Turkey, all over. Uh, send us a video. you got till Sunday to do that. Uh, send it to our email address, scfcfantv73 at gmail.com. It is on the uh, on the screen for you now. Or, of course, via our social media sites, uh, which are across the top uh, of the screen. If you uh, could do that and be part of our Wembley show, uh, we would love to uh, to feature you in that. Uh, right, uh, moving on. Uh, we're this now, and... Um, I mean, I've always been optimistic for top two. I know uh, some of you have even doubted we, we'd make top six. But, of course, we're definitely going to make top two now. Uh, we're going to get promoted to the championship. Uh, what I'd like to ask you is, we made it to the championship. Which which of our players would you keep who, would, who you think could do our job, actually, uh, in the championship? I mean, there can't be many. And I know we'd have to have a good spend, but is there any in our team who you think could uh, could cut it in the championship? We'll start with you, Michael. In three, two. This is so going to bite one. us on the backside. If, this is so going to bite us on the backside if we don't go up now. Like, okay, if we're looking at a really hypothetical scenario that we do go up, um, you're probably going to have to. Uh, I'd probably give maybe half a dozen players new contracts, only because. Of the fact we're not going, we can't we're not going to have a. I don't know whether we're going to have a complete squad overhaul. Now, don't get me wrong. How many of them would start? <laughs> beyond my anyone's guess, if I had to pick who I'd give new contracts to, um, Willis. I know he's been. I know he's out injured for a few months, but I don't see the harm in a one-year contract. Oh uh, nine, that's the no-brainer. Diamond Hume. Um, I know Dino might disagree with me on this, but I think McGeady, I think on a one-year deal, depends what he's willing to do. Again, for squad options. Um, Maguire, I'd let go. McLaughlin, I'd let go. McFadzian, I'd definitely let go. Burge, maybe as a number two, but, well, 
Burgess is number two, but I would, I would want, I want a much better keeper for the championship. Uh, I think Burgess is all right for League One, but uh, I'm not, I'm not as hundred percent sure he'd do it in the championship. Maguire don't I think he's good enough for the championship. Wyke's the funny one because although he scored a lot of goals this season. Um, oh. in, 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 but obviously, in the previous seasons, his general hold-up play has been shocking. He gets dominated physically uh, in the, on the pitch, just before anyone tries to make a filthy joke out of that. Uh, who else is there that I want to go with? Ledbetter, uh, I definitely don't think he cut it, unfortunately. I wish, I, you know, if he was a few years younger, definitely. Um, if I had to, okay, if I had to, to, to bring it forward, because you want to ask other people, uh, I would say, just for the squad, uh, McGeady, um, O'Nine, Willis... Power, no, sorry, not power. Hume, Diamond, or like, whoever else. I think those are the ones that I'll probably give a new contract to. And yes, Jimmy, I'm on, yes, Jimmy, I'm on 4G, but it looks like half of that, doesn't it, with the pixelate uh-huh. stuff. So thank you very much. Everybody having a go at your uh, internet connection there, Michael, tonight. Um, <laughs> That's fine. I'm used to it, man. It's good banter. It's banter. Uh, nice, Dino, nice. Uh, DJ Sizzler on the chat says, uh, Dino, mate. Uh, as to stay Matthews I don't know if he's on about Matthews our goalie staying or if he's on about Matthew uh, who's on our channel staying and uh, for next season in the championship um, we'll go to you then Dino uh, what do you think how many of our players do you think oh see see Dino if you watch if you watch Terry alright you won't understand what he's actually doing but that is making <laughs> That's making a bed. <laughs> so that's... But wait there, but wait there. Wasn't the bed already made? So he's just basically just rubbed his hand over it, pretending he's making his bed. He's trying to show you. He's trying to confuse you because obviously you've never seen that done before. Oh, you true. know what I mean? So, um, so Dino, how do, let's say, yes. right, let's say we go up to the championship. Um, who of our team, our current team, could, could do a job in the championship, do you think? Eh, uh, right, here we go. Uh, I'll say I'd keep Lee Burge because you need a keeper. He's better than Matthews. Uh, power for the fact he's actually been really w- done really well under uh, pa- um, Parkinson, under Johnson. 09, no brainer. Bailey Rice. <laughs> um, I'd probably give McGeady one more year because he does, he does have quality, quality about him. Charlie Wyke. If we're staying in this division, I'd, keep, I'd get him a new contract. But if we went up, I wouldn't because I don't think he's good enough. For the championship, uh, uh, bit, um, Willis, Denver Hume's a funny one. Uh, I'd probably say Denver Hume for cover. We we'll have to get a new left back in. Um, oh, um, obviously, people like Winchester already on contracts. Um, who am I missing out here? Who am I missing? Um, well, Jack for Diamond. Me, Jack for Diamond. Me. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think he could it. I, I haven't. I don't think he. I don't think he could in the championship. Players who are out of contract in the summer. But there you go. Yeah, I, I'd, if if we went up, I wouldn't keep Diamond. Unfortunately, um, I don't know. Uh, there's not many. There were not right. many I would keep. Um, Tom Wallace on the chat says Matthew should stay at work because uh, uh, Sainsbury's Wi-Fi is Matthew. better than you mean, was... Michael. Matthew. Oh. E, what an insult to Matthew sorry. saying he's you're playing like, his like, like Terry Tom, sorry, sorry. You, you poor bloke. Sorry, sorry, James. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, Tom Wallace says, so sorry, Michael should stay at work because uh, since his Wi-Fi is better than uh, Bowers. The legend. All right, uh, there you go. Um, well, see, for me, it's uh, before we pass that, I, I think we'll virtually need a brand new team and there's there's one or two might make it. Uh, we'll throw it over to uh, to Matthew, uh, our our man in Essex, uh, the Towie legend. Um, how many of our team do you think could actually do a job for us in the championship then? Yeah. Do you know what? I don't think anyone's... I haven't really heard anyone say Lyndon Gooch yet. Um, no, I, I don't... I Personally, for me, I think Lyndon Gooch is still under contract until 2022. So he's yeah. not going to be going anywhere. Um I'd keep him maybe as a squad player, although I'm not the biggest fan of him. Um, as Michael said, we need to think about the whole squad, not just the start in 11, who's going to start every single championship game, because I think we can all agree that um, there aren't many players in our team currently that um, we think is good enough for that. So the only players I'd say, probably Willis, O'Neill, and here's one that might shock you. Do you know what has really impressed me this season? Conor McLaughlin. 
And Conor yeah. McLaughlin has been really... He, he's the only player, for example, against Crew that I felt when he got the ball was really composed on the ball and he didn't he didn't do anything wrong. He never gave the ball away. He always knew what he was going to do and looked really calm. And, you know, he's really impressed me this season. And I think keep him as a squad player. Obviously, he was with Millwall in the Championship, played for them, did all right with them, didn't, didn't do anything bad. So I'd, I'd keep him in the Championship. So that's, um, yeah, Willis 09, McLaughlin. Um, on Jack Diamond... I, I, like do you know, I, I'm not I'm not too sure about that Jack Diamond. To be honest with you, I think he's been really, I don't know, er erratic in his play. It, it was a bit like what Linda Gooch whoa, whoa, used to whoa, do. Whoa, 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 erotic? <laughs> Who's been erotic? <laughs> erotic. <laughs> All right, sorry. Oh wait, wait uh, sorry. All Corgan has has entered the bedroom. Whoa, uh, Hang on. <laughs> What's going on? Move out the way, Dino. Well, let's see. Oh, Corgan is making his bed. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Sorry. Sorry. Hey. There you go. Right. Sorry. Sorry, Matthew. It, it, right. it, this happens every now and again on here. Sorry. Continue. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Oh, he just saw him so walking out the room. He couldn't fit through the door. <laughs> uh, right. Sorry, Matthew. Go on. Yeah, no, as I said, it was something that Linda Gooch used to do when he first came into the team. He used to get the ball and do all these stepovers, and then he just used to lose it. And I think that's what Jack Diamond does as well. He doesn't release the ball quick enough. He, he just tries to do all these Cruyff turns and stepovers. And uh, I, just, I get really frustrated with him. And it's not a player I think at his best will cut it in the championship. Same as Elliot Embleton as well, who's on loan currently. I really don't rate him that much either when he's in the team. I think he, he comes on, he gives the ball away really bad. And the age that he is, I think maybe League One is the, the highest level that he'll play. So, um, yeah, it's only a handful of people, but we've got to do a complete a, a completely new rebuild. Um, and I'm confident with the team that have, have come in. KLD and his, um, yeah, it, it is mates. So I think I think they'll do a better job than the Eastley lads. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty much Willis, 09, McLaughlin and Char Charlie White could keep him as a squad player because as Michael said, it's not just the starting eleven; it is the squad players. And I, I'd have him as a backup striker. Because... Um, you know, you know, whatever league you're in, if the if the ball comes in from across and you get your head in it and it, and it goes in, no matter you know, no matter what defence you're against, you know, if you get your head on on a you know on a on a cross, then and you can direct it in the goal, which Charlie Wack has been doing, put him in the same positions as he does whatever league he's in, and he he, he can still score the goals. So, yeah, I, I think I think um, yeah, I think. Keep 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 Charlie Wyke um, in, but yeah, the, we need to do a big rebuild to be able to get to the championship. Well, I mean, who'd have thought at the beginning of this season, and certainly on this channel, we would be saying uh, keep Charlie Wyke uh, if, if we mm. go up to the championship. But fair play to him; he's he's proved us wrong. You know, we hold our hands up and say, you know, we we did say, you know, he wasn't very good, and but like I say, he's proved us wrong, and and. And we're glad of that. I think you're saying Gooch, I think, is a good shout. I mean, uh, Gooch has played in the championship, you know, so um, possibly. Now, I don't know if Paul Lead is uh, related to you, uh, Matthew. It's my dad. It's my dad. Yeah. Is that your dad? Hello, dad. It's my dad. All right. Uh, well, your dad says Purge is useless. Uh, the worst he, says everyone, he says everyone. He says everyone's useless anyway. So. Right. But right. Purge. Well, well D Dino is going to go absolutely potty with your dad. Uh, yeah, me, 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 me on, and Matthew Stag will never talk about football if he doesn't really, he doesn't really, Birch. I mean, come on, man. He, he probably rates uh, Remy Matthews, does he? Thinks Remy Matthews best nah. Remy, does he? No, nah, he certainly doesn't. He's not one of them, is he? Nah. <laughs> uh, well, could you we imagine say, thinking Lee Birch is useless and actually rating Remy Matthews? <laughs> we we want to say a big a big thank you to your dad anyway, uh, Matthew, for allowing you to stay up late tonight and come on <laughs> to the uh, to the channel. Uh, so thanks thanks Paul, uh, Matthew's dad, and uh, it also says down here uh, on the chat, uh, Jeff Holcroft says uh, Matthew he likes your favorite eleven blog. So obviously he's on about the uh, my Sunland eleven. Uh, you, you can Jeff. catch uh, you can catch uh, Matthew doing that. And uh, don't forget, of course, you can also catch uh, Matthew uh, on Fans React as well if you wanna if you wanna catch him down there. Um, so, um, was somebody waving to get in there? Um, oh, Dino, was he <laughs> trying to get back in? 
No, no, I mean, I'm just shook up no, by, right, me, okay. by Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan oh, gave right. us the fist. I'm, 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 I'm crap me pants now. Like, give us the, uh, give us the. Uh, right. We'll have know. none of that. We don't want to know who's been given the. F right, um, <laughs> Jacob, Jacob, um, we, we, which, which of our players then could make it, uh, um, could make it in the championship? Do you think? Right, I'm going to go through mine now. Luke 9 I think is a must, 100%. I think he'd be the first player I'd give a new contract to now, depending on what division we're in next season. He can play anywhere in the team, to be honest. He'd even do a job in goal, to be honest, even if he was second choice in Remy Matthews, as long as he's not here next season. Uh, Charlie White, you know, it's, it's the goals he scored for me. I think he, he has got at least another season in him, and I think he'll really want to prove a point in the championship if we get promoted, that he can continue the goal scoring form that he's had this season. <laughs> uh, going through uh, the rest of the squad, you know, with Jack Diamond, I don't think he's the finished article just yet. I think he's the sort of player that the likes of Christian Speakman and his recruitment team have come to Sunderland Football Club to work with and improve over time. So I think he will be in one of those, he'll be placed in a category where they'll set targets of can we improve certain elements to his game over time. And I think Jack Diamond will stand out and be one of those key players, a bit like Oli Younger, who's in the team now. Uh, Bailey Wright, definitely. Connor McLaughlin, like Matthew was saying, this season being one of our most improved players, particularly up moving from fullback playing as a centre-back, and I think he's done terrifically, if I'm honest. Uh, I'm, I'm going to throw in a controversial one here. This might be a controversial one to some. But go on then, Jacob. Go on, throw it in. <laughs> throw it in. People, people might not agree. You know what? I think Lee Burge has done enough to deserve a new deal, to be honest. Even if we go up, I'm not sure he might be first choice next season. I think he'll be potentially number two. But I think he... He's a decent enough keeper, at least to be a second choice stopper. Someone to have in the squad that has got a bit of experience about it and will be coming off the back of. I think he's done very well for us this season. Right. Lee, considering right, he would do. Right, Matthew, you want in there? Yeah, can I just say uh, Coventry got rid of Lee Burge and then won the league the next season. Um, so I don't know if that proves anything. Uh, but Lee Burge, I mean, oh. I think my dad said it as well. He He's, he's dropped <laughs> a, maybe 16, <laughs> 16 <laughs> points this season. You know, I mean, for example, can I, do, can I just say as well, that like whole city at home where he, the ball's straight at him, he could catch it. He's just, uh, he, he, he's, he's he poor. He had one eye? <laughs> He should have gone off. He should have gone off if he had one eye. He shouldn't have oh, stayed on the pitch. Well, uh, Dino, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, yeah right. right. You mentioned Lee Birch, but he didn't see Jordan Willis, so they let Jordan Willis go and won the league as well. So you can't just be <laughs> saying, oh, Lee Birch, Lee Birch left, so they won the league. But sort of Jordan <laughs> Willis, but he's one of our best players. So you can't be, you can't be seeing stuff like that just because you don't like Lee Birch. You've got to look at the facts. Willis left them as well and they won the league, but you've got nothing bad to say about Jordan Willis. So, right, come uh, on. Terry, Terry, you won in there. That's why they won the league to let Jordan Willis go. <laughs> oh. Willis, uh, well, Willis, too bad of a plan. Well, I've got to say, Jacob, I mean, I'd, I don't think, I don't think Burge is that bad. I, I really don't. No? Uh, <laughs> you, you know, you know, he, he could be a, a, a second keeper or, or whatever, but um, yeah, not a bad show. Mm -hmm. um, right, we've got uh, 167 people uh, mm -hmm. watching uh, on the stream at the moment. Uh, we've got 75 likes, and we'd love to get to 100 before the end of the show. It'll take you a, a second to just hit that thumbs up. Just do that uh, and get us to 100. So uh, let's get those uh, those likes up if we can. Um, DJ Sizzler... Uh, Watson says, save the chat for the flagship. Uh, I think he's referring to my show I used to do down in uh, in Blackpool. Uh, Joseph Billingsley uh, says, Ross Stewart uh, would be good in the championship. Um, well, we don't know yet because we've uh, uh, we've yet to see uh, what he's like with us. Uh, Terry, um, when we go up this season into the championship, which one of our players uh, do you think could uh, could do a job for us? Well, I'd probably agree with the majority and say Lee Burge would probably do a job as a second goalkeeper. I don't. I think he deserves the way he's played this season. I don't think it hasn't been hasn't been bad at all. To be fair, I mean, 
he's, he's grown into the position as each game goes along and he's, he made a great save the other night. So, yeah. Charlie Wyke, is that what Matthew said? I mean, if, the, if we get better quality in the midfield, he'll get better assists. And if he's in the right place, which we know he will be, I mean, he's going to be marked better in the championship that he's going to be marked in League One. There's no doubt about it. But at the age of 27, you know, he might improve a little bit. So he, he deserves another contract for a season in the championship. Why not? As the second striker. Or possibly a, a, a two strikers, I'm not quite sure. Luke one nine, yes, he deserves the opportunity in the championship. But apart from that, I like the way Max Powell's grown into his captaincy now. He seems to be a lot more vocal on the pitch. Seems to be driving the team on more in the last few matches that I've seen for a while. He gets animated. I, I, like, I like his passion. I, I, I definitely, he's grown on me this season, Max Power. I probably probably deserve a, a contract. Then. Probably get a contract next season in the championship. Not always as, as, the, as the leading man, but he could come off the bench. Um, and apart from that, uh, you might get the odd defender like, like McLaughlin, who's did in the championship before, but the rest of them, the rest of them they need to go. Otherwise, we'll just come straight back down again, to be fair. The majority of them. I don't think there's anybody, to be I'm brutally honest, I don't think there's anybody that would probably walk into the first squad in the championship next season if we want to succeed and stay up in the championship or get into the top half. Let's, let's not, even Lu- not even look or nine. As much as yeah. I love Lugo and Nine a bit, as much as I think he's a fantastic human being, a, you know, a, a, a credit to Sunderland, a credit to, to the human race, I would love and I would pray that he would make it and I would give him his opportunity. But deep down inside, somewhere, something says to me that none of them will make it in the championship in the first team. Oh, well, I bet KLD is over the men about that, having to spend even more money. Uh, Michael, you was uh, one in there in three, two, one. Yeah, I was I was going to say <laughs> that um, the, the, the thing to counteract what Terry's saying, that if, how many of these players could be good enough if we went up, it, com- it, completely, it, it completely depends on what Sunderland's objective is. If our objective was to say challenge to try and go up, which I don't think it would be the way, but if it was that, then none of them. But to to, to stay up in the championship, I would say the likes of oh like again oh nine Willis right. He's uh, I, I think Denver Hume could be. Um, obviously, then from there you're looking at uh, like a matter of um, a preference and opinion. Like McGeady, I think is good. But that I think those those players I mentioned, I think are good enough to certainly be around the first team. Like it was in around the start of eleven, but. Again, it just entirely depends on what Sunderland's objective is if we get the championship. But uh, like I keep saying, we've got to get there first. Oh, are we, man, Michael? Man, we're top two easily. Terry? I don't want to go over the championship and just <laughs> try and just survive. I want to be mid-table first season. Mid-table, Terry, comfortable man. mid-table first season. Terry, 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 man, we've got KLD. We go up, we buy, we strengthen we're up no, there, exactly. Man. If that's the case, then we don't need any of these players. Splash the cash and buy the new team. Right, yeah. there you go. Um, well, right then. then Terry, uh, to be fair, though. Go on. Terry, to be fair, I think if we if we did go up to the championship, the first season would probably be about consolidate. The first season probably would be Asian, no, unfortunately. I'll, I'll, I'll love to go back to back promotion as much as anyone, but let's be real, that isn't going to happen. So, yeah. um, well, at least it's very, very unlikely to happen unless... I totally agree, Michael. Our favorite, and I've written that off. So I think the season is going to have to be comfortable survival. I agree with you. I would. I... Sorry. No, I completely agree with you. I think comfortable survival is what we need, and I think one or two players deserve a contract for the way they played this season. Only one or two, man, because the majority of them don't. Uh, right. Look, uh, just just very quickly. Then I. I mean. I know, I know. I'm Fair always, enough. I'm always the positive one, and I think back-to-back promotions, uh, if we go up, uh, because of the KLD factor, uh, is very much a, um, a possibility. Because I just think, I think he's got the right attitude. I think he knows what he wants. I think he'll, he'll invest. We'll get the players we need, and I think we'll get a good, uh, a good squad for the championship, and uh, and be up there or thereabouts. Um, right, what I need to do, uh, because we are quickly running out of time, uh, so it's going to just have to be predictions for the uh, uh, for the Rochdale game. Uh, before 
we do go. We're on 85 likes. Uh, we've got 160 people uh, watching the live stream. Uh, we just need another 15 people just to hit that thumbs up. It'll take you a second to do so. Uh, do that. Let's get to 100 before we finish. Um, again, as per usual, we are running out of time. Uh, we was going to preview the uh, the Rochdale game on Saturday uh, at the Stadium of Light, 3 o'clock kickoff. Uh, Rochdale's form, uh, the last four games, drawn, drawn, lost and lost. Uh, so basically, let's just go for a prediction from each and every one of you uh, for Saturday. Uh, well, I think we'll start with Dino. What do you think, uh, Dino, for Saturday? Home to Rochdale. 2 0 Sunderland. That was short and sweet. Have you got, uh, are you having a disco later when we finish? <laughs> yeah, I will be, mate. In my bed. Disco in um, bed. <laughs> right. Um, Terry, what do you think? What time's the stripper coming round, Dino? <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I'm any oh, down, really, down, down time. Hulk, oh, Hulk Hogan's right. ordered it, so I've got to wait for <laughs> Hulk Hogan to get back us. Well, I and was going to say 2 0, but Dino's pinched me scoreline, so I'm going to say 17 0. No, sorry, sorry, 2 0, 2 0. 2 0. And of course, um, uh, we can't go around to Dino's to have a disco with him because of lockdown, but very soon. <laughs> Very soon, we'll all be round uh, round Dino's house. Uh, Matthew, uh, what do you think? A prediction for uh, Sunderland versus Rochdale? Yeah, it's not going to be an easy game. We played a lot worse against worse opposition, so it's going to be difficult. But I think we'll get. Yeah, I, th I think I think we'll get three nil and play really well. Three nil to Sunderland. Three nil. Hey, we have... uh Yes, yeah, yes, Terry. I think Rochdale are probably the worst side in the in the league at the moment. In the last seven games, they've only got two points. Um, yeah, I do believe they're not doing very well, but uh, as is the case with uh, a lot of teams who've not been doing very well, they'll come to uh, uh, they'll come to the Stadium of Light and where we would on paper we should be beating them four or five nil. Uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't work like that. Uh, Mark Rodham on the chat says, uh, uh, disco in bed. Uh, yeah, we won't go there, <laughs> but a uh, good that gives a laugh. Uh, Jacob, um. Quick, uh, a quick prediction for the Rochdale game. Yeah. Sh should be an easy win on paper, but we do we're not doing things the easy way at the moment. So I'll say two one, two one to us. Two one to us. Uh, Michael Bowers in three, two, one, zero, minus one, <laughs> minus two, <laughs> minus three. Two years later. Michael, can we have a prediction before, preferably oh, before thought, the I, game? I didn't actually hear yet. That's why I was waiting. Yeah, sure um, you do. Okay, Sunderland, Sunderland three, Roch, Sunderland three, Rochdale one. It won't three, one three one onwards. All right, look, uh, I'm going go to go for a, I'm going to go for a comfortable four nil win. Uh, I <laughs> think I, I just think uh, it, we're, we're due to return back back to form. Uh, but having said that, I'm not bothered if it's a scrappy Hopefully. one win and it goes in off somebody's backside. It's all about the three points uh, is what it is. Um, Luke, we are right out of time now. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we have hit 101 likes. Thank you very much to you for that. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please do so. Uh, it is free and uh, you can uh, do that. That would be uh, very much appreciated. Uh, we will be back uh, on... Saturday uh, with uh, Dino, Jack and Michael uh, for the uh, for the live stream uh, of the Rochdale game. Make sure you join in for that. Um, and we want to we want to say a massive, massive thank you to Matthew uh, for coming on the channel. Big round of applause for Matthew. Thank you. Woo! Terry, Brilliant. have you had enough? <laughs> Terry, Terry's gone to bed. And uh, and don't forget, uh, you can catch uh, Matthew on my son at 11. Uh, YouTube channel and of course on Fans React uh, if you want to uh, catch more of Matthew uh, down there and while we're on about Fans React uh, we do want to say good luck to Paul who's uh, his last is expecting a baby uh, today so good luck to you Paul hope everything goes alright uh, there uh, so from myself uh, we Philly uh, from Dino uh, from Michael Bowers 
from uh, Jacob Kirkbride. I've got a funny echo somewhere. What's going on it's there? Cause, it's because of Terry. Uh, we got, I'm from the mad mistake who has, uh, who has gone to bed. All right. And, uh, and Matthew as well. All of us uh, will see you next time. Thanks for joining in. See you. Bye-bye. Woo!